So we have a generator function called values. And when I invoke that generator function, it's going to create an object that I can control the generator functions execution context. And we're storing that returned object inside of the control variable. So now I can reference the control variable to control the execution of my generator function. And you can take a look at some of the primitive values that we are yielding. For example, you have the string data type, the integer data type, the floating point data type, and you also have the Boolean data type as well that's being yielded. So you have all these different primitive data types that are being yielded. So what we can do is we can take a look at executing and invoking from where we are currently in the function, which we're starting right here at the beginning of the execution. We're at the first stop sign and it's going to yield back the data type of string. It's going to yield a string back and we're just printing that out. Now what we need to do is go to the next stop sign and print that out. So we say, look, run the next method and then we're going to echo out a line break and then we're going to concatenate whatever value is being returned by the current method. So the current method right now, we're at the second stop sign is going to return the value of 100 and we print that out and there we go, 100. You do the same for the floating point number and the same again for the Boolean value, true or false. And you can see all of these different primitive values that are being printed out. Now there's a lot of code here. This is good because it allows us control over the object. So saying current and next methods allow us to control the execution, that's good. But what happens when we want to very quickly in just a few lines of code iterate over all of the stop signs. So we go from this one to this one to this one to this one in a few lines of code instead of writing out all of these functions over and over and over again. How do we do that? Well, again, we do need to invoke the generator function because that creates a control object and that's how we control the execution. So we still must invoke the generator function and that returned object gets returned to the control variable. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to use a for each loop. Now this for each loop is going to iterate over all of the stop signs and it's going to do it automatically without me having to run next and current, next and current. So what I want to do is I want to target the control object. The control object again is how we control the execution so we need to be able to access the pedal. So you can think of this like a self-driving car now. We're telling the car to automatically push the accelerator pedal until it reaches its final destination, the end of the execution. So I'm targeting that control object and I'm saying, look, each iteration, I want you to return the yielded value and we assign that to this variable. You can give this variable whatever name you like. Mine's gonna be value. So on each acceleration, what it's gonna do is gonna say yield the value to the value variable. So on the first iteration, it's gonna be string. On the second iteration, it's going to be equal to 100. On the third iteration, 100.11. Fourth one is gonna be true. So you can see it's just gonna loop through these yields and the yielded value is going to be assigned to this value variable. Perfect. And now what I want to do is I just want to echo this out. So I'm gonna say echo and I'm gonna create a line break and then I'm going to concatenate on the value that's being yielded. And I'm gonna end with a semicolon, I'm gonna save this and I'm going to hit refresh. You'll notice string 100, 100.11 and the Boolean value got converted into an integer one. Now, you don't just have to return primitive data. You can also return other data types such as arrays and associative arrays. And also, don't forget, you can have classes. So for example, I can say class my obj, and I can instantiate that class within the yield statement. So I can say new my obj, which means it will instantiate that class. It will create the object from that class. 
Now what I need to do is I need to print this out and the echo statement is just going to cause an error. It's not going to allow me to print out arrays and other objects straight away. So what I need to do is I need to use JSON encode to encode my objects into a string. And again, the value is going to be the thing we're going to encode into a string. And I'm also going to pass in JSON pretty print. And that way things will look nicer and I'll end that. So this function right here is going to return a string. It's going to convert our objects into strings. And then we're going to concatenate that string onto the line break right here. And in fact, let's have two line breaks. And then I want to echo that out. So let's print this out. You have your array you have your associative array and you also have your object that came from my obj class so hopefully now you can see that this is really good you can return not only primitive values but you can also return objects as well now i can also comment out these two lines real quick so now we just have our standard array and i'm just going to hit refresh now, what happens when I want to yield each value? Well, the yield statement allows me to actually make each one of these values in the array a stop sign. So we can stop on each value. So essentially, we can yield from each value in the array. And how do you do that? Well, you say quite literally yield from this array, this object. So what happens when I save this? Well, let's save this now and watch what happens. If I hit refresh, you'll notice it says string, array, and 100. So what it allowed us to do is it said yield from each one of these values in the array. So each one of them is now a stop sign. And all I had to do was use the from keyword. And you can do the same with your associative array. So let's say yield from an associative array. Let's see what we get this time. So I'm going to hit refresh and you'll see it says 100 and key two. Now, please do note it's not returning the key value. It's returning the actual value stored within the key. So 100 and key two. So 100 and key two, just the same. And if we try to do the same thing, with the object right here and I'll just comment this out so we're yielding this new object right here if I hit refresh we just get the braces and what happens when I say yield from and save this and hit refresh now we get a fatal error now you may be saying well you've got no class members for example properties or methods within this class so this object doesn't contain any members and therefore you're going to get an error. The issue is that's not actually the case. The reason why yield from doesn't work is because it only works with arrays and traversables. What does it mean by traversables? Well if you think about a building with an elevator that's a traversable building. We go up and down the elevator shaft to different floors. So this is what it means by a traversable object. Now, when you have objects that come from a class, well, you can actually have private and protected members. So these private and protected members are hidden and you're not allowed to traverse over them. Or you could think of these private and protected members as floors that you can't get off on on the elevator. So you can't traverse, you can't go up and down every single floor. So it's not a traversable object. So it's only associative arrays and standard arrays that you can yield from. You cannot yield from a regular object. So if I just get rid of that yield from, and there we go. We have all of our yield of values from the first array. Then you have all of the yield of values from the associative array. And then you have a yield of value of the object that we created from the myobj class. And also don't forget that functions are callable objects. So just like we can yield back an object, whether it be an array, an associative array or a standard object, you can also yield back a function. So let's just do a quick example with one yield. I'm going to create a function. Now this function has to be anonymous. You can't just give it a name. 
So we're just going to create a function and we're going to say echo out hello world. Now what's going to happen is this function is going to be returned and assigned to the value variable. And then what we can do is we can target that function that's stored in the value variable and invoke it. So let's target the value variable which contains this function that's been yielded and then open and close the parentheses and end with a semicolon to invoke the function stored within that variable. Now if I hit refresh, notice it says hello world. If I don't invoke it, let's go back and let's do JSON pretty print. So let's save that and hit refresh. So now we're not invoking the function. Instead, we're just trying to pretty print the function and notice we get the braces, which indicates that again, a function is a first class citizen or in fact a callable object. So those are the different data types that you can yield. You can yield primitive data, you can yield arrays, associative arrays, or objects that come from classes. And also you can yield callable objects, AKA functions.